This morning, the path to paradise, a Francis Ford Coppola story. Coppola is best known for the Godfather movies. But as Sam Wasson makes clear in his bold new book, that was never Coppola's peak vision. We've talked to Wasson before. He's one of the best at writing about the lives of artists. With Coppola, he found someone who was still hungry, not just about his new massive, big-budget, self-funded film, but someone who still dreams of reinventing the way we make movies. Did you always want to do a Coppola book? I always wanted to do a book about Zoetrope because it, to me, is the real Coppola, because people think Coppola is the godfather. That's what he is deepest in his heart, but it's, it's Zoetrope. Zoetrope is the Francis Ford Coppola dream. A dream that began in Queens, New York, when Coppola, the son of second-generation Italian immigrants, was stricken with polio as a child. In his solitude, in his isolation, he creates a better world for himself. And in that sense, he's the archetypal artist. By the late 1960s, Coppola had made his first few movies and along with George Lucas, was at the forefront of the new Hollywood. Hey, you're supposed to be the fast thing in the valley, man, but that can't be your car. It must be your mama's car. That's when Coppola and Lucas originally founded Zoetrope, as Coppola explained to a local reporter in 1969. I think we're going to make a lot of films that will make money, and I think we'll make a lot of films that will not make money, but hopefully all the films we'll make will films that uh, someone wanted to make desperately and enjoyed and loved making. That's the big thing. Coppola famously did not enjoy making The Godfather, but Zoetrope needed cash, and a difficult shoot produced an American classic. You come into my house on the day my daughter's to be married, and you ask me to do murder. Money. Godfather's success allowed Coppola to make the conversation. Since when are you here to be entertained? Right here. Next was Godfather Part Two. I knew it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. I love the smell of night pump in the morning. Then Apocalypse Now. What do you know about surfing major? You're from goddamn New Jersey. Something all those films had in common an emphasized use of sound as a storytelling device. This is the end, beautiful friend. A technique perfected here, in the basement of the landmark Sentinel Building in San Francisco. It's a huge part of Apocalypse Now. A huge part of Apocalypse Now, a huge part of the Godfather yeah. movies. It's what the conversation is about. And uh, here we are where they recorded uh, Martin Sheen's mm. voiceover. Saigon. I'm still only in Saigon. The spoils of Coppola's success with Apocalypse Now allowed him to expand Zoetrope, a studio meant to be run by artists for artists without the corporate interference of a typical Hollywood setup. But the underperformer Zoetrope turned out had everyone wondering what happened to the master. What happened was is that like every great filmmaker, he is a gambler. And he gambled on Apocalypse Now and hit the big time. Don't look at the camera, just go by like you're fighting. Like you're fighting, don't look at the camera. And with that money, he took that money and put it into his next project, which was the creation of the Dream Studio, Zoetrope Studios. And he put all of his money on black, and um, it came up red. Which is not to say Coppola didn't find ways over the coming decades to leave his mark. He and his wife raised a family. He built, ran, and sold a winery. Zoetrope has produced over 90 projects under its banner, but a definitive masterpiece has remained elusive. Until now, maybe. Coppola is about to release Megalopolis, costing a reported $120 million all out of his own pocket. All of you have been fantastic collaborators. I appreciate it so much. Megalopolis deals with how to rebuild a broken city perhaps a parable for Coppola's life. 
Because, as Sam Wasson makes clear, in The Path to Paradise, Coppola still wants to make his vision of zoetrope happen. It's a system that really embraces trial and error, new technologies, new means of distribution that Francis had imagined back in the 80s before we even had the technology to implement them. Now we have the technology uh, which streaming approximates. So you can cut down on a lot of these external expenditures that are now so baked into the movie business and so much, so many jobs and livelihoods rely on them, but the product doesn't and the audience doesn't. It is hard to argue any other filmmaker has had higher highs and lower lows than Francis Ford Coppola. At the age of 84, he remains convinced betting bigger than anyone else is the only way to live and the only way to change the world. That's what Francis wants. I mean, that's what Francis wants. Francis wants utopia. A movie is a little community, a little way to practice the ideal community. And in that sense, it's a rehearsal for utopia. And so is a studio. I mean, yeah. is, it, is it really crazy to spend your life thinking about how you can make the perfect place? Is it really crazy <laughs> to think, to spend your life thinking about no. ways to create the perfect place? No, no, I do it all the time. Yeah, but I, I, I can't execute the way Francis well, he, has he's tried had, to. As we talked about, he's had trouble doing that as well, but he keeps on trying. I love that about him and you know? everything about him. And I love that and he has, he's been so devoted to his family. I love that his daughter has taken up the helm of his, and his, his craft. Yeah, yeah. And his craft. Yeah, I love the winery. I love, I just, he's, he's, He's just seems so delightful. He, he said something interesting in the book that he's like, he's like, I love that my daughter has exceeded in uh, film what I've done. Aww. Like, isn't that always the goal? Oh, you that want your kids, kids to exceed what do you do better have than you do? Speaking of kids, you might say he developed a passion for recycling at an early age, like the age of three. We'll see the amazing place that's taken him. It's taken him a decade later. For some of you, your local news is next. The rest stick around. You're watching CBS Saturday morning.